Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to share my latest Vanguard portfolio update. I'm going to go through every single fund that I invest in, in both my stocks and shares ISA and my SIP, and I'm going to show you the percentage changes over the last month. Towards the end of the video, I'm also going to tell you my total rate of return since I invested in this portfolio. Now, I opened this portfolio in September 2019, so it's roughly a year and a half old. At the beginning of April, I received some dividends from some of the funds I hold, so it has been a very successful month. So let's not waste any more time and head over onto my laptop and take a look how the funds are getting on. So as you can see, I'm going to run through my ISA funds first, then I'm going to go through the SIP, and then I'm going to go through total rates of returns. So the first fund that I hold in my ISA is the Emerging Market Stock Index Fund. So in last month's update, it made up 1.49% of my overall ISA portfolio, and it was down 5.3%. This month, the weight has decreased slightly down to 1.43%. However, it is up 2.11%. Now, overall, since inception, this fund has made me 22.99%, so pretty much 23%, which is fantastic. So the reason I hold this fund is that I believe the emerging markets have quite a lot of potential for growth. I do hold a smaller amount. As you can see, it's just 1.43% of my overall portfolio balance. So it's not a lot, but I wanted to sort of just dabble a bit more money into emerging markets. So the next fund I hold was my first ever fund and it was the FTSE All World High Dividend Yield and the ticker symbol for this one is VHYL. Last month it made up 6.28% of my overall ISA portfolio and it was up 2.96%. This month the weight has also decreased down to 6.07% and I am up this month by 2.34%. Now again since inception this fund is up 9.59% which is great. The reason I first picked this one was the fact it paid such a good dividend yield. However, to be honest, this fund doesn't have quite the growth potential that some of the other funds that I'm going to show you have. This is why I've stopped investing more into this one and the amount I hold in this one is also quite small relative to the rest of my portfolio. So the next fund I hold is the S&P 500 ETF, ticker symbol for this one is VUSA. Last month it made up 46.01% of my overall ISA portfolio and it was up 1.3%. This month the weight has decreased down to 45.87%, however it's had a brilliant month, it's up 5.6% overall. That gives me a total rate of return since inception for this fund of 34.32%. Now, just quickly, where I say since inception in that last column, that was from when I first bought the funds. So not all of these funds were bought in September 19. Some have been held since the beginning, such as VHYL, and some were bought slightly later on, if that makes sense. Now, we all know that the US has been dominating the markets over the last 10 years. Who knows if they're going to carry on with their strong growth, but at the moment, they're certainly doing very well. And that is why I choose to invest more into the uh, North American markets. I know a lot of people say I'm already heavily weighted into the US with some of the funds you're going to see in a second. But personally, I don't see any big problems with buying even more in North America. The way I see it is many of the biggest companies in the S&P 500 ETF are actually companies that trade worldwide anyway, with the likes of Facebook, Google, Amazon, etc. So the next fund I hold in my ISA is the FTSE All World ETF, and the ticker symbol for this one is VWRL. Last month it made up 45.35% of my overall ISA portfolio and it was down 0.01%. This month the weight has also decreased, it's down to 44.49%. However, again I've had a great month, it's up 4.22% overall. That gives me a total rate of return since inception of this fund of 42.46%, which is incredible. Now, I must add here, the reason this fund has done so amazingly well since inception is the fact that I actually invested quite a large sum of money in this fund pretty much on the lowest day of the markets during the coronavirus drop back in March, April of 2020. That was complete luck, of course. I don't recommend trying to time the market. It was actually just the fact that I was using up the remaining allowance of my ISA balance, and I was just lucky that it fell on this low day. And then the final fund that I hold in my ISA portfolio is the ESG Developed World All Cap Equity Index Fund. And this is an accumulating fund, which means any dividends paid are automatically reinvested for us. 
Last month, it made up 0.86% of my overall ISA portfolio, and it was up 0.87%. This month the weight has increased as I actually chose to put this month's money into this fund. The total weight is now 2.14% of my ISA portfolio and it is up again a fantastic result of 4.31%. That gives me an overall rate of return of 13.17% since I started investing in this fund, which to be honest was only a few months ago. This is the newest fund I hold in my ISA portfolio. Okay, so next up we're going to move on to my SIP. Now SIP is self-invested personal pension. I choose to invest directly from my limited company into my SIP as there is various sort of tax benefits of doing this. I will link to a video that I made all about ISA versus SIP that you may find helpful. You can find that in the top corner of this video. So the first fund I hold in my SIP is again the ESG Developed World All Cap Equity Index Fund. Again, it's the accumulating version. Last month, it made up 96.53% of the overall weight of my SIP portfolio, and it was down 0.21%. You may well be asking, well, why was that one down, but your ISA one wasn't? It was because I invested at different times of the month. This month, it makes up 96.73% of my overall SIP portfolio, and it has had a great month in comparison to when I put the money in and it is up 5.34% this month. That gives me an overall rate of return of 4.53%. Okay, so just before I tell you my total rate of return, the very last fund that I invest in is the Life Strategy 100. Last month, it made up 3.47% of my overall SIP portfolio, and it was up 1.05%. This month, the weight has decreased slightly to 3.27%, and it is up an incredible 4.79%, which is remarkable. It's fantastic. Considering this is sort of a fund of funds, so it's almost like a one-stop shop, so to speak, for some of you that that may want just one fund to invest in, I really do think the life strategy funds are pretty incredible, to be honest with you. Of course, this is not financial advice, so I'm not saying go off and buy one now, but I'd certainly give them a bit of research. And again, I've made a video all about the life strategy funds, should you wish to check that out. It's in the top corner of this video. So back to my spreadsheet. Overall, my total rate of return for the life strategy fund is 20.53%, which is, again, amazing. So let's now move on to my overall rates of return. So last month, my overall rate of return for both my ISA and my SIP was 0.72%. This month, my overall rate of return is a brilliant 4.87%. Now, I must add here, as you can see from the previous two months, I don't always have months of almost 5% gains. You can see last month I made under 1%, but you can see you can have some amazing months investing in index funds. Of course, my strategy is seen as very risky, as all of my funds are 100% equity, so this means it invests 100% in stocks. As I start getting older, I will indeed start introducing some bonds into my portfolio. But right now, I have a very long-term buy and hold strategy, so I'm 100% stocks at the moment. So finally, what you've all been waiting for, what is my overall rate of return since inception of this portfolio? It is 41.15%, which is just mind-blowing. I cannot believe I'm in the 40%. It's the first time I've been above 40% for any of you that have watched these updates before. But it's just remarkable. It's incredible how this portfolio is growing. The portfolio is starting to get quite a large balance of money and I'm really starting to notice that compounding effect that people say once you reach certain milestones. Before it seemed like a really long hard slog whereas now it feels like my portfolio is almost becoming this sort of money making machine that every time I log on it's got more money. Of course I don't want to get too carried away and we could well be due a big drop in the markets however my strategy will not be changing. I'll still be paying it into my portfolio every single month and I'll be buying all the way through that dip. So this week's viewer question is what is your favourite index fund? Please can you leave your comments in the comments box below. As always I share my Vanguard portfolio updates every single month so if you'd like to see next month's update and see how these funds are performing don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Apart from that I hope to see you on another video very soon. Take care guys.